Hiya! So in this video, we're going to be talking about maximum and minimum of independent random variables. So basically what we want to talk about is we've been looking at a lot of different functions uh, between random variables, um, polynomials, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, etc. But one function, I guess two functions that we haven't looked at are max and min. So in other words, if I have like n different variables, so say I have n different variables here, x1 to xn, um, and they're all independent, then I want to know what the max of all the random variables are, or the min. So this is kind of the next question that we're going to ask. Like, what is the max, what is the min, and how do we kind of calculate it? And it turns out that actually using the, the cumulative distribution function helps us calculate this. So we'll start off with x max and kind of go from there. What we have is if I want to figure out f max, right? I want to figure out f max. Um, this is going to be equal to p of x max less than or equal to x, right? Well, when is this true? x max is less than or equal to x if every xi is less than or equal to x, right? Because this is the maximum. So every single one has to be less than or equal to x. Um, okay, so if every, so we have this so far. So if every single one has to be less than or equal to x, we end up getting this one, right? They're all independent, so it applies to all, applies to all. They're all independent, so we can split them up. And then by definition, each one are just equal to their, all, their own individual probabilities, right? This is the definitions. So in other words, we can just convert back into the CDF of the other ones. Convert. So in other words, maximum is just a multiplication, which is bizarre. That is weird. Not going to lie. It's super bizarre. Um, okay, well, let's look at min. Min is a little more weird uh, because if we're looking at min, um, like if we have x is less than or if x, if min is less than or equal to x, um, what this is saying is we kind of are going to have the inverse, right? That every xi is greater than or equal to x, right? Um, right? Because if, uh, yeah. But like in a weird way. So maybe I should go a little slowly because this this probably doesn't make sense based off of this. So what we have is if I, if I kind of write things out the way I normally would, if I have f of min is of x, right? This is kind of the thing we're trying to solve. We're given this formula just by definition. What we're going to want to do is convert this into the 1 minus version. And we're going to say, okay, if x min, let's look at the opposite and look at x min greater than x. Now here, this is where I mean that every xi has to be greater than or equal to x in this scenario. Because in this scenario, what we have is every xi has to be greater than or equal to x min, right? Because min is the minimum of all of them. And this is greater than x, uh, greater than x, little x. And so this is why we have each one has to be greater than, um, strictly greater than xi. Now these, again, by independence, by independence, we can split them up. And each one of these is also equal to their opposite, right? So xi of x is equal to p of xi less than or equal to x, which is one, which is just one minus p of xi greater than x. So in other words, p of xi greater than x is equal to 1 minus f of xi of x. So plugging this in here gives me this long formula. Uh, this 1 minus should be on the outside, 1 minus. Um, and so like, 
Yeah, this is... Yeah, they should all be 1 minus f of x. Um, and so we just get this formula where we're multiplying the inverse for everything. Um, so it's kind of cool, but it's kind of random. Um, so let's actually look at an example. Uh, actually, we'll look at an example in the next video. I'll break this up. Uh, so I'll see you in the next video for an example of this. So I'll see you then.